Hey, what's up GPG? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my Dart. Um, it's my newest car. It's my um, first manual car too. Um, there's a couple things I've been learning along the way as far as, you know, how to drive a manual and just how that kind of works in my daily life. But there's about five things I really love about this car. There's about five things that I don't like. So we're going to make a five on five. Five great and five bad. We're going to go that right now. One of the biggest things in this car that I'm not a fan of is this shift knob right here. Um, it's very slippery, it's very big. Um, when you when you try to put it into first, it's very easy to put your hand on it and then slip right off of it, just because of how slick it actually is. Um, which is quite annoying when you're trying to shift into first gear or you're doing anything like that. That's probably one of my biggest complaints about this car. Another big thing that I'm not a fan of is these seats. They're very stiff. They don't have a lot of padding to them. Um, so in long car rides, they feel like they're not, they don't really hold you in the seat. Um, I like seats that really hold you in, and I feel like that, that, that a car should hold you in and be a little bit more comfortable than these are. Something else I wish this car had, this car has, you know, a regular radio in it, but I wish it came with the nav and like the fully loaded. Me personally, I love cars that are very luxurious and very, have a lot of amenities to them, a lot of gadgets to them. I'm very much of a gadget guy. I like to have have like the cool like you know like an Apple watch or something like that like I like to have cool gadgets around me all the time so that's something that I really wish I had in here it's not a necessity it's something I can add after the fact but it's something I do wish I had in here the one thing in this car that you know a lot of people who drive my car they've driven it around or say is that the clutch is way too easy um, you know I've driven Calvin's Miata I've driven uh, you know the uh, the Subaru and the Subaru has a stage two and it's very hard. It grabs and it, it when it goes, it goes. And that is a full face and I'm used to that, but then the six puck is different as well. But this one is just way too easy. When you put your foot in it, you can't it's it's hard to feel that grabbing point. It it, it you can't quite tell where exactly it's at. Um, I'm not used to it yet. I'm still learning it. Um, and it, it's especially hard for anybody else who, who tries to drive my car because it, it, it it's not user friendly at all. Um, I wish it was a little bit stiffer. Um, it's not needed though because it's only 160 horsepower. Of course, the torque isn't enough that you actually need something that stiff. But uh, at some point, I would look into getting maybe somewhat of a stiffer clutch than the stock one is just to get a little better of a feel. One thing this car does get is great gas mileage. I know when I'm on the highway traveling back home, I used to live in uh, about, a, about an hour away from here, and when I drive back home, I can get it up to about 30 to 32 miles per gallon, which for me is amazing, um, especially coming from the Accord, which is a V6. And I drove that car a lot, and it, did, it sucked a lot of gas, but I drive this one as well. And right now, um, with a little bit of city driving, what does it say here? I think I was saying at like 26 miles per gallon, which is not bad for city driving. Um, it's just that it, it's a lot nicer on my bank account and on the amount of gas I put into this car um, and I like that about it. Of course the biggest thing, the reason why I searched um, in my search to get a car is I wanted a stick shift. I wanted to have a manual transmission. It was my first first manual transmission car. Um, I love manual transmissions. It's you know, like once you get an iPhone you're kind of stuck. Once you hit the Mac you're kind of stuck. Well once you get a manual transmission you're stuck. It's so much better of a driving experience. You know how to control the car. You have a lot more control of every dynamic along the road. It's a lot easier. I drove in the snow. It's a lot easier that way. You have a better, you can feel where the car is at more so than a computer trying to tell you where it is. Now this is something that's very interesting on Mopar cars. This is something that happens on basically every single Mopar car I have seen. It's actually right behind the steering wheel here. These are your controls. I find it a lot easier to use these on the backhand side so you've got your volume on this side on the opposite side so my left knee over here it's gonna have the uh, channel so channel up and down you can switch between the sources Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff I like it on the back side because I don't have to feel like my thumbs are up here I can just tap with my fingers mm, excuse me I burped um, but I like that fact that I can do that um, and there's stuff on the front like I've got cruise control up on the front on this side and then I have all of my uh, like I have Bluetooth uh, phone calling here and then to deal with the dash or the display up here in front of me and so I really like the fact that they put them in the backhand side it makes it a lot easier for me to use I'm not a fan of the key to the start now if you can see the tip of this that tip has to go inside hold on once I gotta grab my light that hole it doesn't ever fit right. I'm always fiddling around with it, trying to make it fit right, and it's it never does. It never fits perfectly. It's always a struggle, something where I'm always messing around with it. 
Um, I just wish it was like a push this button to start or if it was just a regular key. I would rather have that. The other big thing about this car that I love is it came with 6,000 miles on it. It was almost brand new. Like basically, the person took it off the lot. They didn't want to drive a manual anymore, so they traded it back in. And so it sat on the lot for a while. And that's how we got a kind of a really good deal on it. Um, but it, it has a factory warranty on it. And that's something that a lot of you out there, when you're modifying your car, you want to be very careful of, is when you're modifying it, you don't want to cause a problem that could void that warranty. That warranty's already saved me once. Um, I had a part where it was the linkage between you know, the drivetrain and the, sh the shifter, and it got stuck. It, it didn't move, it was frozen. Um, and if I had not had the warranty on that, I would not have had a free rental. I would not have had you know all that time and, and all the parts and labor covered. So I'm really grateful I have that. So that comes to um, I have at like 12,000 miles right now, and that's over at 36,000. So I really have to really think about how I'm going to work with this car and what kind of mods I can do to it without voiding that warranty. Thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate you following along with this car, and I promise you down the line this car will have mods it's just not gonna happen right now um, with the warranty still on it so I'm still weary of that so just keep watching out for our channel keep watching everything we're doing you know Miata videos are still coming we still got that build going along it's coming towards the final stages but it is coming along um, we got a bunch of events coming up too we're gonna be going to IA we're gonna be going to a bunch of these different events so make sure you guys follow us along on our snapchat right here our Instagram right here and also on Twitter and Facebook. We aren't as much on the Twitter and Facebook, but we are going to be getting on those a lot more. So make sure you follow us on there. And always to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, GPG.